Beep, beep. What is up, ninjas? My name is Sam World, and yes, I did shave my beard. I got a little bit of stubble here for you know for you guys to rub your hand up and down, and you know you know I know you, I know what you like. But today, guys, I am going to be answering a question for you guys, uh, and this is going to be from my experience. I feel like the answer to this question may vary depending on who you ask, but at the end of the day, the answer will be this similar. Um, and that is going to be how to glue your sins together. Now, I've made a video a while back, which got a lot of views and got a lot of support from big mixing engineers relating to how to layer your leads properly for EDM. Make sure to check that one out. This one's going to be kind of similar to it, but a little bit different with the sense that what if the layers you have so, sort of come slowly in your song? Let's say you have like this re really nice vocal lead here. Okay, so there we have a vocal lead now this is the song currently working on like i said and right here we bring in this new layer that's going to play with it now i currently have it glued together to the best of my, of my ability at the moment okay um now let's talk a little bit about what makes them sound glued together the first thing is going to be that both synths are being ran through a bus channel. In Ableton, you can easily make a bus by holding control and clicking and then doing control G. That's a shortcut. You look pro and you look like you're working hella fast. Now, what does the bus channel open up for you? Why do you need to do it? The reason you want to do this, guys, is because you're going to want to process these two guys together when it comes down to compressing them together, EQing them together, maybe sidechaining together. This one is very, Deadmau says never to sidechain the same on all leads and all the sounds. But I feel like if you're going to treat them as, as together as a whole, sidechain together as well. You know, they're going to go together through the ups and the downs of a roller coaster lifestyle, up and down, side to side. All right, so hopefully you get my idea there. The next thing that it opens up is reverb. A lot of people... A lot of people just think reverb should go on individual channels and they see reverb as this effect which is like you know oh yeah put it on on a, on a sound and it'll make it sound really you know they want that sound and that's it but the thing that you need to understand is that reverb can also help glue stuff together best thing you can do is let's say you have drums you can add a bit of room reverb to them to bring them together you have uh, pads going, you put the same reverb. You don't want to have different reverbs going on with these different leads because reverb is going to be a tool that also creates depth. And what I mean by this is that if you put too much reverb on something, you push it to the back of the mix. And the problem with that is, is that if you want your sounds to sound together, a lot of the times one being all the way in the back and the other one way in the front isn't going to give you that result. In fact, it's going to give you the result of, again, like kind of like the Titanic. Jack's going down and, and Mary or whatever her name is is blowing the whistle. Jack, come back. Jack. Uh, so you get you get my idea there with that, guys. So, again, busing will open up the possibilities there. You want to group them together. The next thing that's super, super, super overlooked is the stereo imaging of the sounds. Now. I feel like if you want these sounds to sound together, you definitely, again, don't want to have one of the leads be hella wide and host effect, and then the other one straight down the center. I'll give you an example. So right now, both of these are kind of similar. The Iceland lead, which is the pink one, is a bit wide, and it sounds better there. However, watch what happens when I let the vocal lead be stereo. I, I, I unmono it. Now when we mono it again. They kind of gel a little together. Now let's apply that reverb that we were talking about. Okay, so again, reverb is gelling it together. Having them be in a similar stereo image is good too. The isolene is also hella wide, but what I've opted to do is I've used the utility inside of Ableton to lower the width down on it a bit so that it's not too And it's going to be a little bit more set. Okay. Now, going back to the bus, the next thing that you want to do is you definitely want to compress the sounds together. The reason for this is going to be due to the fact that leveling, you can definitely get a good level, but a lot of the times, let's say you're working on a song and you have your snare hella loud, 
a lot of people will leave it loud on purpose because they know that when they go into the mastering phase and they put a compressor there, that compressor is going to clamp down on that snare. So you're going to get sort of like a pump. Now, the goal here with the compression is going to be to kind of get them dynamically on the same level. What that means is let's say the, the Voichel lead is too punchy and the other one is has sort of like an attack to it. The glue compressor is going to tell the vocal lead, hey, calm down. Your wife needs your attention. Hopefully... Hopefully that makes sense. So the best ratio to have when you're gluing sounds together is going to be a two to one ratio. That means for every two dB that goes over the thre uh, your threshold, one dB comes out. So you're losing volume there and you do have to make it up with the makeup gain. Uh, so that's one of the biggest things there. <laughs> So what we're gonna do is just gonna we're gonna apply that glue again here, and we're gonna again put two to one ratio. We can have the dry wet be at 100%, and then from there it's all about playing with the attack and the release settings. The attack settings are gonna pretty much tell the compressor how fast to react to someone going over the border uh, wall, and then uh, the release is gonna determine how long it takes for it to come back or come back to base after it's caught that person or you know hopefully I didn't trigger anyone. Uh, but you get my gist there. How long it takes for it to come back. So let's say that the vocal lead is too punchy and I really want to tame it then I will go with a lower attack let's say I want to preserve that but I still want the, the body of that vocal lead after the transient hits uh, to get compressed down similar to our Iceland lead which again uh, exploration sounds it there um, then we go with um, sorry with, with a higher release there so we're gonna set this up and just go and play it <laughs> now we're gonna make some of it up Now, do A and B it, and don't let um don't let volume change uh, help you decide whether this is actually gluing it together or not. Because a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll put too much makeup gain, everything will get louder, and they'll be like, "Yes, it's gluing it together." And a lot of the times, you know, it's more about you know having the same volume output. So right now we're hitting 18, and we're still hitting 18. So that means again, volume is not playing a role here. So with it. Notice how the vocal lead kind of feels like it's getting sucked in. Uh, that, that is the compression working there. A lot of times it's more felt like Steve Angelo said than, than heard. But again, I don't know. That's just the way I've always seen it. Now, I can lower the attack down more, which is going to cause my threshold to spike up. Now, what I want you to pay attention is that Iceland lead, uh, the lead this Notice how, how it reacts when the vocal lead hits. Now it did all. Okay, so you can kind of see what it's doing there. It's just creating that kind of like a vibe and it glues them together or sucks them into a black hole together. <gasps> so we can give it more attack if you want to preserve the punch. Okay, cool. Now, of course, you want to EQ them together, so I don't need to say anything about that. You know, if you want them to sound glued together, to be together 50 years together, they have to be going through the same shit, so they have to go through the same processing. So again, guys, reverb, delay, those are going to be cool things you do. Now, that is actually going to be um, the most when it comes to gluing your synths together, but let me answer some questions that may arise. Now, when I say that you should process these guys together in the top leads, I don't mean that you shouldn't process individually in each channel. You definitely want to EQ, you want to get rid of dirt before you get these guys together. Because in real life, if you got shit going on and you're not ready for a relationship, you know, most likely that relationship is going to fail. Same thing here. If the leads sound shit and they you get them together, they're going to sound shittier together. So you got to make sure you also clean them up. There's a question that I'm going to get asked a lot. So that is the first thing I say. So for instance, we got the vocal. You can see there's a bit too much fat there. So we got to lose some weight. So we're just going to be doing some reductions to it. And a little bit of compression because, again, I thought it was too punchy. So I do have a bit slight compression on it with the makeup gain off. And again, guys, don't leave that shit on because Ableton's not loyal with it. 
Then we have the nice little Iceland lead. We get rid of the. You can see that when it plays the lower notes, there's too much of, of mid frequency, mid low. So we're going to clean that up. And then we are using Sooth. The lead itself is very harsh. So Sooth is a great uh, plugin if you have big bala, you know, you're a big bala, you, you sell some drugs on the side, or you're a big producer and can afford it. It's 250 bucks for like a multi band spectral sort of uh, compressor where it just clamps down on harsh frequencies. Uh, and you just control it with the def and you can pick where you want it. It's a pretty cool one. I'll make a video on it in the future to see if it's worth 250. Uh, from there, uh, the synth is going to be heavily reverb, but that makes the sound what it is. If I take it. Okay. But the idea again is to um, process them together. And I did lower the width down on it a bit just again to make it sure that when it goes into the bus, they're kind of around the same field. Uh, again, I, I probably could have gotten away with turning that. Okay, uh, so that's going to be the end of the video, guys. So again, just in review, if you want your synths to sound good together, one, apply the same effects to them. Uh, what that means is reverb. If you're going to chorus, if you're going to saturate, try and do it to all of, the, uh, all of them together rather than doing each one separately. If you're going to use OTT on one, try and use it on the other one as well. Now, keep in mind, this doesn't mean that you can't be putting reverb on each channel individually. Uh, that's if you're doing more of a sound design aspect on that instead of a mixing side of it. Uh, again, it's totally fine. But at the end of the day, you really want to glue these guys together with these effects. The next thing is going to be, again, look at the stereo image. This is something that most people don't pay attention to. So if you get these both to be in the center, obviously they're going to sound more together. And the third thing is don't be stupid. Obviously don't pick like a fucking dubstep wub and put it with like a... Uh, a vocal lead they're never going to sound gel together glue together you can definitely get it close but obviously it's two different vibes that's the last thing i forgot to mention too is pay attention to the sounds you're using if you're using some of these sounds remember what are you why are you trying to glue them together why does the other sound exist if they're going to play the same thing in my scenario i wanted a bit of width and i needed a bit more high frequencies and i also wanted this sort of melodic climax motif to <laughs> So when I started the song, I actually made this melody. And then I decided to put the vocal to synth to play together with it on certain shots to accentuate those and then get a little bit of complexity there. So that way to... Okay, very simple as you guys can see. Uh, but I decided, you know what, to start the song. Uh, with the vocal one because it sounds very pleasing and I don't think that high pitch one can carry the song. But again, that's just an arrangement decision there. But if you guys have any more questions, leave them down in the comments. Maybe we have some smart asses in the, in the, watching the video right now that can help you out too as well. But again, guys, at the end of the day, watch the knowledge and apply it. You don't just watch this video and go like, and now I know how to do it and go and tell people apply it gain experience using it um start using it until you kind of feel like okay it works or maybe it doesn't work for you but this is my take on it this is what i feel like you need to do to glue your sense together and as always i hope it helps and if you want to support my channel it's always guys evilsounds.com like i said a lot of these sounds are in the exploration sound set so if you like them make sure to check it out and i'll catch you guys next time peace out and you guys have a great rest of your day night morning and, and vice versa peace out